Hi, welcome to Lab Module 5 of the Azure Data Factory Hands-On Lab. In this lab, we'll be covering how to use Azure Data Factory to spin up an on-demand HD Insight cluster to run some Hive queries to do some merging of our data. Before we get into the specific task in this lab, let's talk a little bit about what an HD Insight cluster is and what all that we can do with that. While in this lab module, we are running Hive queries that's just one sample of the available technologies in an HD Insight cluster. Azure HD Insight clusters come in several varieties. As you can see, Azure offers cluster types that span multiple big data technologies, including Spark, Pig, MapReduce Streaming, and Hive, which we are using in this lab. Depending on both your use case and what technology you are familiar with, each of these technologies provide great capabilities to do tasks such as transformations, machine learning, querying, and analytics at scale. One of the great benefits of an HD Insight cluster is the ability to scale the cluster to the amount of nodes and power that can handle your workload. When we configure the on-demand HD Insight cluster, you'll see we have the options to scale the cluster to our need. Note that Azure Data Factory and the HD Insight activities don't have to be limited to an on-demand cluster. If you already have a cluster spun up and it's ready for workloads, Azure Data Factory can utilize that as well. Before we talk about the task for this lab, let's discuss what you'll need to complete this lab module. You'll need an Azure subscription with rights to deploy and use Azure services. You will need to have the Azure Data Factory we created in Lab Module 1. Also as part of Lab Module 1, the deployment script uploaded the Hive query files that we'll use in this lab to our Azure Blob Storage container. The output from Lab Module 3 is the FAA master text file that is used as part of our merge in this lab. However, if you didn't complete that Lab Module, we did actually deploy a copy of that text file to the Azure Blob Storage container as part of the deployment script in Lab Module 1. Finally, in order to spin up an on-demand HD Insight cluster, we need to make sure we have an application account that has rights to deploy resources to our resource group. We walk through how to create this account with the appropriate rights in Lab Module 1, as well as how to grab the ID and key we'll need in this Lab Module. Now let's talk about the specific tasks we'll be tackling in this lab. We'll be using the Hive activity to spin up an on-demand HD Insight cluster and run a Hive script against our flat files in Azure Blob Storage. This script takes information from the FAA master file created in Lab Module 3 and merges it with some FAA aircraft data that Lab Module 1 deployed to our Azure Blob Storage container. The FAA master file is the registry of all the planes registered with the FAA. And the most important bit of data we need in there is the aircraft model number. We use that to perform a join into the FAA aircraft data and merge the output to a single file containing things like the number of seats, the plane manufacturer, the plane model, and also the plane's tail number. The tail number is important as this is what we'll eventually use to join this data back to our flight information in our data warehouse to enrich our flight data. For example, we'll be able to see the most popular aircraft models by airline or the average seat capacity on certain routes. Part of our high script specifies an output clause that will store the results of our query back out to a text file on our Azure Blob Storage container so that we can use this in our data warehouse load in Lab Module 6. After we configure our Hive activity, we are going to continue chaining together our pipelines using the Execute Pipeline activity to build our master pipeline workflow. Again, if you are familiar with SQL Server Integration Services, this is similar to using Execute Package tasks and using a master package to control a data warehouse load. The benefit is each individual pipeline is easier to maintain, develop, and test. After this lab module is complete, you should have an understanding of how to spin up an on-demand HD Insight cluster to perform big data tasks such as Hive queries. Configuring an HD Insight cluster to run a Spark or Pig script should be a similar process with just different input scripts and output considerations. One thing to think about is if you create the HD Insight cluster on-demand, as opposed to using an existing cluster, you do need to think about how you are going to materialize the results of your big data work. In our high script, we use the output clause to save the results to a file. 
with other big data technologies, you could also persist the output to HBase, SQL Server, or directly back to an Azure Data Lake store. In our next lab module, module six, we'll be loading our data warehouse staging tables with everything we've done so far. We'll be setting up a series of copy activities to load from both our operational data store, Azure Database, as well as our outputs in Azure Blob Storage, which included our weather data and our merged FAA data. Hope to see you in module six. Thanks.